Hello and welcome to the first tutorial video of basic fishing. In this video, I'll be showing you on how to catch piper, also known as garfish, and talk about some facts that may help you improve your chances on catching these fish. Hope you enjoy watching this video and I hope you learn a thing or two on the way. Now before we get started in this video, some people will ask the question, what is piper and what am I exactly targeting? Well, this is what a piper looks like. It's a long slender silver fish that slightly resembles a marlin. And like marlin, these fish have a tendency to leap out of the water to escape predators. Unlike marlin, however, their lower jaw is much more longer than its upper jaw, and this shows us that the piper is a surface feeder. The piper uses their unique extended lower jaw to sense vibration caused by their prey. These fish are omnivores, and their main diets are crustaceans, plankton, seaweed, and eelgrass. Finding piper can be simple. These fish will be anywhere where there is food for them, but most importantly, they like structure because it provides food and shelter for them. But pipers are not only found around wolves, but also sandy bays, harbors, and estuaries. The average size for piper is between 20 and 25 centimeters, although they have been known to reach at least 40 centimeters. This is my personal biggest piper caught in the photo you see here, and it measured 37.5 centimeters. These fish also find safety in numbers and never swim alone, so where you catch one piper, you're likely to catch more. Piper is the best fish for many beginners to start off, and it's great fun for both kids and adults alike. Catching them is easy and fun, even for me. Now that we got some ideas on what the pipers are, we need to find some gears required to catch these fish. These fish are simple to catch and, to be honest, not much gear is required. The gear that is obviously required for catching piper is a rod and reel. You don't need and expensive gear. As a matter of fact, any cheap setup will do. Like my setup here, for example. This is a Jarvis Walker combo that cost me $50, and this rod is great to use for both piper fishing and also fishing off the wharf. You also need a float. I personally like to use these pencil style floats, but they're also called quill floats instead of the common ball float. Because the quill float can detect a bite much more accurately and it's more lightweight in the water which makes it easy to see if you got a bite or not. They're easy to store away as well and they last for a while. Another thing you need is lightweight sinkers. Make sure you find sinkers that is light enough to prevent your float from being sunk. As you can see here for example, these sinkers are quite small and very light, light enough to allow my float to be floating on the surface. For hooks, I would recommend small ones because pipers have small mouths, which is the reason why many people find it difficult to catch them. As you can see here, I'm using these long shank hooks, the size 18, although size 16 and 18 are highly recommended, but these are the hooks you want to use to catch piper you get a better hookup rate. Another thing you need is trace. To make your own rig, I recommend thin trace. I always find it easier to catch piper with thin trace, around 6 pounds. 12 pounds sometimes work, but I found the hookup rate a lot better with 6 pounds. You also need a towel to hold your fish, bucket or ice box to store your fish away, pliers to make your rig, a tackle box to store away your fishing gear, plus bait, which is very important. Now bait is another thing that is important, because piper can be extremely picky, which can make it hard and very difficult to hook up to. 
Not to mention, these fish have very small mouths, so the bait size is something to be considered as well. Unlike the yellow eye mullet or the jack mackerel or other fish species that nibble away at your bait, you want the piper to swallow your bait instead of picking at it because you get a better hookup rate if you do so. The recommended bait size for piper is about the size of a pea. As you can see here, I'm cutting tiny bits of baits and uh, it can be a bit frustrating but it's worth the trouble. So the size is the bait size is the size of a pea or even smaller. The bait that is good for piper I found are oily and soft baits such as mussels, pippies and pilchards. But they also take squid baits as well. Pipers are known to be very fond of maggots and some fishermen will breed maggots specifically just to target the piper, although this isn't exactly necessary. Now that we got some of these tips out of the way, let's talk about the rigs. I think the most important thing about rigs is going simple, especially when you're starting off with piper, because the last thing you want to do is spend all your efforts just to find out that there are major setbacks. Here, as you can see, I'm using a ledger rig, to catch piper, although you can use a simple float rig which is a hook running down on a long trace with split shots just to allow it to drift around the current naturally. However, another simple way to start your piper fishing would be to get these sabiki flies. They're very good and they can boost your fishing efforts as well. Pipers, however, are known to cause a lot of tangles, so be careful on how to handling them when you hook up to one. To avoid the piper from causing major tangles, whenever I hook on to a piper, or any other fish in general, I always grab the end of my sinker and keep tension at the end so that the rig won't fly all over the place when the fish is flickering trying to get itself free, as you can see here in this footage. Now before going out for piper fishing, here are some important tips that you may need to know on piper fishing. Pipers are always on the move on the search for food. Using burley will definitely increase your chances on catching these small fish, especially when fishing is hard. Burley is a mixture of minced up fish that is mostly oily and is used for many fishing to target many species. Having burley in the water will definitely keep the pipers interested and will stay in the area for a while, but these fish can easily disappear as fast as they appeared. When targeting for piper, try to avoid fishing around the deeper areas. Pipers are surface feeders and they don't mind hanging around the shallow areas, and they mostly feel safe around the shallow areas. Around 3 to 6 feet of water is enough for the pipers to be around, as you can see in this location. And pipers won't be the only fish you hook up to, there'll be several species you hook into as well, such as the yellow eye mullet, kawai, and sometimes snapper and jack mackerel. Detecting bites can be slightly tricky, and it really pays to keep an eye on your float at all times, but primarily you want the float to go all the way down in order to get the best striking actions, as you can see here. However, when you see your float getting pulled down, rising up, or moving around unnaturally, it's always worth to give it a good strike. The strike needs to be quick but firm. Striking too hard will just rip the bait right out of the piper's mouth or not give it enough time for the fish to get hooked. And this is what your piper setup should look like. As you can see here, I have not much stuff and I'm pretty much ready to go. Now that we got some tips on how to catch Piper, let's go fishing.